Be seated. So one of the things that always bounces inside the mind of a preacher is whether or not there is a concrete difference made uh, by the sermon that he or she preaches. Uh, did somebody take what was said and integrate that into their life in some meaningful way uh, that enacted change in the world? Uh, and most Sundays, you just kind of have your fingers crossed and hope that maybe, maybe somebody walked through uh, these doors and left somewhat transformed, uh, and you leave it to the Holy Spirit to do that work, that nudging. Uh, but I did have one incident where there was a concrete uh, moment uh, where somebody heard a sermon and then went out into the world and, 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 and acted on it. Uh, and it was about a year ago this Sunday, uh, I had... Uh, a, talked about St. James. Uh, I had a, a stone shell uh, that a parishioner had brought back from, uh, from Santiago, uh, and I talked about the legend of, uh, of, of the different pilgrimages to Spain and why he was so significant uh, as their patron saint and all the different stories around that. Uh, and then about a month later, uh, Jimmy came to me and said, your sermon struck me and I've decided that I'm going to Spain. And I sort of nodded and said, okay. And then then he, he said he was carrying a backpack around town with weights in it getting ready. Then he talked about his gold, uh, his gold gym membership and that he'd been really working out. And then he uh, talked about buying the ticket. And so I knew this was a reality at this point in time. Uh, and, and certainly it was a, a gift to hear him talk about his experience today. Um, uh, but it was one of those concrete moments. Uh, and today I uh, plan to talk more about the biblical account of James. Uh, there is a lot that sort of... Uh, uh, unknown about him, especially the life after, uh, af after Jesus was no longer a part, um, or at least in, in, in the flesh, uh, that, that is speculated. But we do have some really concrete moments in history. And just as uh, Jimmy talked about uh, uh, the incredible power of being in places where, where he was confident that James had walked and the, uh, uh, the power of, 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 uh, of being there in those moments, there are a few of the places that I got to go when I was in Israel uh, were places that struck me uh, because James was there, because Jesus was there, and there are places where, uh, where, where James um, um, encountered Jesus. And as uh, the priest at St. James, there was something about that that struck me. The first is the story of the call of, of James, and we have uh, what we're going to say is James and John and not uh, Peter and Andrew over there in the, the stained glass window in the corner. Uh, and according to Matthew and Mark, we don't know exactly what Jesus said, uh, but somehow just the presence of Jesus on the shore uh, as they came up uh, struck them in some way enough for them to drop their nets, uh, wave to their dad and say, see you, uh, and walk off. And we have no idea what transformed their hearts uh, I'm sure Zebedee was wondering himself, and I'm sure when he got home to his, uh, to his wife uh, and said that uh, our meal ticket for the next 30 years, our sons, uh, have decided to go follow Jesus, that she had a lot of questions. What was it about that moment that transformed their lives? Um, but whatever it was, something about being in the presence of God in the flesh uh, compelled them to drop everything. By the time we get to Luke, uh, there's a, a great miracle of, uh, of the overflowing amount of fish that they catch, and then the miracle of it, uh, they're, they're somehow moved to drop it. But in the first two accounts, it is just Jesus at the shore saying, do you want to be fishers of people? If so, drop your nets and follow me. And they do. Um, and one of the next stories... Uh, uh, that we have of that encounter of, of James is the uh, uh, where James is, is, is specified as one of the uh, the small group of people that get to surround Jesus is the healing of Jairus's daughter. Uh, they are uh, they're going about and they're uh, they're healing and they hear that Jairus's uh, daughter is gravely ill and then there's another story right in between uh, of the woman that grabs the hem on Jesus' cloak and is healed uh, and then they go and they find out that Jairus's daughter is now dead uh, and and uh, Jesus says. You, 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 and you, come with me. Uh, and it's, uh, it's, it's James, John, Peter, and Jesus who go. Uh, and they go to uh, Jairus' house. Uh, there's incredible weeping, much like the story of Lazarus. Uh, uh, the daughter is dead. Uh, and Jesus tries to tell them that, that the, the child is merely sleeping. Uh, and and they, they, they almost uh, kick him out of the house uh, with how preposterous it was. Um, and then uh, he says to her, my child, get up. Uh, the child uh, gets up and... Uh, 
and people know that they're in the, in the presence of something divine, something beyond uh, anything they'd seen before. So as, uh, as fellow St. James uh, members, uh, try on those eyes of, uh, of James. What was it like to be on the, on the shore? And one of those profound moments of being uh, at the Sea of Galilee is it's almost unchanged from that biblical time. Uh, and you could picture uh, where Jesus might have been standing, uh, what it might have been like to bring uh, your, your, your fishing vessel uh, and your exhausted self and, and, and your torn nets to shore and have Jesus there at the shore. Um, uh, but what was it like to be there when, uh, Jesus, uh, when Jairus' daughter was lifted up and, and that family story was turned upside down? Uh, and then the next, uh, we're starting to get to the journey towards the cross. Uh, there's all those stories that the disciples in, in mass were, uh, were, were, were gathered, uh, but this is another story where Jesus takes that inner circle, those people uh, that it's profoundly important for them to understand what's about to happen with him. Uh, again, he takes Peter, again he takes John, and again he takes James. Uh, and he goes up uh, Mount Tabor, which is another place that I was uh, blessed to be able to go. And at the top of Mount Tabor, uh, Jesus somehow starts to change. He's transformed in dazzling white. Uh, and you can only imagine, try to keep those eyes on, those glasses of being able to watch through the, the lens of James uh, and the realization that something, something is happening. Uh, and the whole story starts to unfold as, as Moses appears uh, and, then, and, and then Elijah uh, as Jesus is dazzling and then the voice of God. Uh, and in some ways they realize uh, that they're going to be part of this story and that the story is building towards something and that they're there for a particular reason, that at some point, that story will involve them uh, in a profound way. And as they go down uh, the, the, the mountain uh, and they uh, begin the task of walking towards Jerusalem, we have the next story, uh, which is one I think is important for us to know as well. As, uh, as Christians, I think we're called to be careful about what we hear and what we believe uh, and test it against all the other things that we know. Uh, as they get down and uh, they knew in their heart that they were supposed to revile the Samaritans. The Samaritans were bad people. They were uh, they were. Uh, unfaithful Jews that, that hardly practiced at all. They dismissed a lot of the sacred texts. They didn't even think Jerusalem was the Holy Land. Uh, and when they're heading uh, towards Jerusalem and they go through uh, Samaria and they're rejected, uh, uh, James and John say, you know, Jesus, do you want us just to bring down fire and destroy all of these people? Uh, which is pretty confident, I have to say. You know. uh, but that's also one of the characteristics that I don't want you to forget about James, because I think the more we learn about James, the more we uh, identify with James, the more we realize uh, what we are as, as members of St. James, but they lived with passion. Uh, they were called the sons of thunder, uh, and, 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 and there's a lot to believe that uh, the reason that he was the first martyred uh, was because of, of his passion and because of his fire uh, of, of, for following Jesus. Uh, so then from there, we get to the story for today. Uh, and that's a kind of a difficult story. And I've always sort of thought of it as uh, the story of the mom who wants uh, their child to get a bigger trophy. Uh, the, the, the mom who's sort of trying to sort of, you know, uh, aren't my boys wonderful? Aren't they precious? Shouldn't they be at the front of the line? Uh, and I've always wondered why on this particular day we tell that story. Because it's not necessarily uh, the most, most favorable impression you get of, of James and John. Uh, but I saw it in a different light today as I was preparing this. We are already heading towards Jerusalem. This is a mother who's given up her boys uh, 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 from living in the house, who's given up her boys from, uh, from being the fisherman that was supposed to take the family business and provide for her in, in, in the later years. Uh, and now as they head towards Jerusalem, and remember, the disciples were the first to figure this out. Uh, Jesus, you know if we go to Jerusalem, you're definitely going to die, and we're probably going to die too. Uh, I mean, they were heading uh, towards uncertain, uh, an uncertain end, uh, and, and certainly for Jesus, a certain end. Uh, and what's that do to a mother? So I think the mother's there saying, you know what? You've taken my boys. You've, you've taken them from our house. You've taken them from uh, 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 my husband's job. And, and now you're heading towards something that might end in their death. Promise me something. Give me something to hold on to me. Promise me this won't be in vain, that there will be some glory, some future, some... Uh, something to hold on to, give a mother something that she can hold on to, that, uh, that by doing this, by following you, uh, there might be some treasured place that they would have uh, right at your side. Uh, promise me something. Uh, and it transforms that story for me, that, it's, uh, that you realize not just uh, the mom wanting their, their, their child to, to be special, but that, that there was an incredible cost that they were aware of. 
uh, I'm becoming increasingly aware of, that, uh, that this journey, uh, well, it wouldn't be for glory, it would end uh, most likely in death, if not the first time to Jerusalem, uh, as we find out when James goes back to Jerusalem uh, in his ultimate death. Uh, and then the next is also a, a place I got to go uh, at the Garden of Gethsemane, uh, the place uh, where, where Jesus was to be arrested, the place where Jesus uh, was at his, his lowest moment and trying to gather the strength and courage to be able to, to do what God called him to do. And he took those, uh, those closest friends, and while they tried as they might, they fell asleep, and, uh, but they were there, and they rose up when, when they tried to arrest Jesus, uh, and they were willing to be there at that moment. Uh, and then we learn after Jesus' death and resurrection uh, that James stepped out boldly into the world uh, proclaiming uh, the good news that Jesus was alive, proclaiming uh, 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 peace uh, and, 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 and glory uh, and, and, and a ministry of love and compassion. And he took it far beyond Jerusalem, uh, halfway around the world, beyond any horizons that people had imagined this story might go. Uh, and then he comes back to Jerusalem same journey he had been on. Uh, why? Because they were suffering famine and he wanted uh, to feed uh, those uh, that were hungry and provide care and hope to those uh, who were losing it. Uh, and uh, in that is when Herod uh, uh, killed him. And that's why that St. James cross is, uh, is the sword. Uh, the sword uh, is the symbol of, uh, in, in the symbol of a cross uh, because that was the, the cross that he died upon was, was, was being beheaded by the sword. Um, and just as they got it wrong uh, uh, early in their story uh, when they were uh, in Samaria, I also think the church got it wrong. They used that cross. They used that symbol uh, of, of somebody being willing to give up everything uh, uh, to feed the hungry, uh, to provide hope, to do the work of being uh, God in the world. Uh, and they used that as a symbol during the Crusades of carrying the sword. Uh, so I, I, I think that's part of our story. It's part of what we need to do to hold on to. So I invite you into three different things as you think about what it is to be St. James. One, that last part of that line, the being willing to give everything. That it's not about glory, it's not about being the best church in town, it's about the willingness uh, to sacrifice of yourself that Jesus calls us to. I didn't come to serve, but to, to, to be served, but to serve. Uh, and number two, that, uh, that we'll get it wrong sometimes. But we need to ask, is this the heart of God? Is what we're doing what God calls us to do? And I think the most important is the third. The third part of being St. James, of carrying that legacy, of being part of that story that continues to unfold, is this. How passionately are we living out the gospel? How passionately are we representing Christ to the world? Are we the sons and daughters of thunder? Do people say that church, that church is having reverberations throughout the world. That church is thunder for any injustice. That church is thunder for any disenfranchised. That church has been claps of thunder for anybody who's disfranchised. Are we living passionately as the body of Christ? Are we passionately representing St. James and Jesus Christ to the world? Do people look at us and say, wow. Those indeed are sons and daughters of thunder, followers of Jesus Christ, and our lives being changed. Amen.